So here is that simple model. Uh, you can see we have uh, pathways here, uh, uh, input that drives a V1 representation, and it goes up in this pathway over here into a spatial processing pathway. And this is spatial processing because the pathway, the connections integrate over both rows of this V1 input, uh, whereas in the object recognition pathway, the projections, the connections are specific to each row. And therefore these rows are really playing the role of kind of features in the real brain, uh, much more complex combinations of features that we use as we saw in our object recognition model to recognize different objects going up in this kind of hierarchical uh, pathway in the what pathway. And this is just a very, very simplified version where we only have two features, the front row being the queue features and the back row being the target features. And so this allows us to make a really, really simple kind of minimalist model that captures just enough to capture this task. And so the object pathway has kind of sensitivity to the queue versus the object versus the target. And the spatial pathway does not have sensitivity. So it responds regardless of the queue versus the uh, target features. And we do have this kind of nice uh, kind of multi-step hierarchy uh, to replicate what we know that higher levels have a, a larger receptive fields. Um, and then we, you can also see that indeed the, the spatial and the object pathways are mutually interacting. They have positive excitatory connections. And this is also true in the brain um, that these pathways kind of reinforce each other and that ends up being important for our model. Um, we'll also see down here that uh, the V1 pathway, the V1 layer, receives top-down connections in addition to sending those feed-forward connections. And so this allows, this top-down connectivity allows spatial uh, attention, for example, to focus on a particular top-down region of V1. And then that also is then what's influencing processing in the object pathway. And this is another way in which spatial attention can kind of focus processing even all the way down in, at the level of V1 and influence object path processing. The first example we're gonna look at is just a really basic demonstration of how spatial attention can allow you to focus on a uh, individual object when there's multiple objects present. So in the Where's Waldo case, you've got a visual display with multiple objects present and in the region that you're kind of focusing, focusing your attention, you can, you can kind of uh, specifically process those object features much, much more clearly and individually. In the first simulation, we're going to look at the case where we have two different object features, the, the kind of queue front row and the target back row. In this case, they're not really queue versus target, but um, we do make the back row uh, slightly more active and more salient. And so the natural response of the network is to respond to that more salient uh, feature. And you can see that happens here. Uh, the network kind of focuses its attention on this more active bottom-up input. Uh, and that allows the object pathway to respond to that. Part of what's happening here is that the spatial pathway is actually helping to focus attention on that uh, location in space because it has more bottom-up activity. And so it's kind of capturing the spatial attention and that allows then the system to focus its object processing pathway specifically on that object. And so if we rewind uh, and see how this played out over time, we can see that in fact the uh, early on, while there was kind of activity very briefly in both spatial locations, uh, and, and, and in particular at that time you had activity in both uh, the queue and target object kind of features. Um, as soon as the spatial pathway started to really win out and have this competition, inhibitory competition is of course always operating in these layers. And so the more, uh, the area with more bottom up activity wins out. Um, and so that extra boost of spatial kind of focus is able to resolve the competition and allow the network to focus exclusively on that side of space. However, when we look at the case where both are presented at in the same location, okay, and now the spatial attention cannot help you sort of resolve which one to pay attention to, 
because you, your attentional window, your attentional spotlight kind of encompasses both of those features, then you see that the object pathway also cannot resolve that. And so this allows you to see how in that separated case, the spatial attention is actually helping you pull apart those different objects. And so that's just like this kind of spotlight of attention in the Where's Waldo example, where when you focus your attention, you can kind of see what's in that particular location. And so here you have kind of conflicting object information in the same location and you can't resolve it. Okay, so that's just a, a very quick demonstration that we can do in this model to show how spatial attention can kind of help you focus processing on the object pathway of interest.